I am Deneen L. Brown, that's my byline. I'm an associate professor here in the Philip Merrill College of Journalism. And uh, for 35 years, I've been a writer at the Washington Post. Just this past year, I was fortunate enough to work on two documentaries about the Tulsa Race Massacre. It is called by many historians the single worst incident of racial violence committed against Black Americans in U.S. history. It began on May, 30, May 31st, 1921, um, when white mobs descended on the courthouse in downtown Tulsa, demanding that the sheriff release a Black teenager named Dick Rowland, uh, Black veterans from Greenwood, which was the Black neighborhood in Tulsa, uh, which is also called Black Wall Street. Those Black veterans went to the courthouse, confronted the white mobs. Uh, the Black veterans wanted to protect Dick Rowland from lynching, and that was very real. Um, and there was a confrontation, shootout, battle. Uh, later on, white mobs descended on Greenwood, this Black community, very prosperous Black community which was also called Black Wall Street or Negro Wall Street. And um, over the next 48 hours, as many as 300 black people were killed. Um, more than 800 were injured uh, by these white mobs and this massacre. It was horrendous. So my documentaries, one is called Rise Again Tulsa in the Red Summer. It was released on National Geographic TV on June 18th, 2021, and also on Hulu. The second documentary is called Tulsa, The Fire and the Forgotten. That was released on PBS on May 2021. Both were released to coincide with the 100th anniversary of the massacre that occurred in, in uh, Tulsa. So the Nat Geo documentary, again, covers the red summer of 1919 when there were massacres in Washington, D.C., Omaha, Nebraska, Elaine, Arkansas, and many across the country. And I argue that it, that red summer, the series, The Reign of Terror Massacres, set the stage for Tulsa, which began in 1921. And then the PBS documentary, Tulsa, the fire and the forgotten focuses on Tulsa. It focuses on the massacre and also current day Tulsa. So the repercussions of that massacre, the legacy of that massacre, what the generational wealth that was lost in the massacre, the generational trauma created by the massacre, the PBS documentary deals with that. I tell my students, I said, look, I'm not an academic. I'm not academically trained. I'm a real world reporter who's been plopped in a classroom. <laughs> and um, my goal is really to try to break down my knowledge from 35 years of working as a reporter and writer and transfer that knowledge to them as much as I can. And I try to cram every, a lot of it into one semester. Um, and I say that my, the value that I bring to the classroom is I'm still writing. So that's what I bring to the classroom. I bring like real world experience. I bring a lot of compassion as well for my students. I bring a real love for writing and trying to get them to understand that there's such power in storytelling. Stories, when they're told well, they can change a person's world. They can help rewrite history as the reporting that I did in Tulsa helped kind of shift the narrative. Reporters can hold the powerful accountable. Reporters have a huge place in democracy as watchdogs of a democracy. And the way you write a story, if you write it with as much passion as you can, you can move readers to do something. You know, I meet each student where he, she, they are in the classroom. 
I try to um, help calm them when, you know, they might, writing can be frightening for some people. I try to um, encourage those who, you know, who are, might not have as much experience reporting. Different students have different levels of experience in my classroom. And I'm trying to make it so that it's not something that they fear, but something that they, they, they know that they can do. They can write stories, they can report, they can get someone to call them back. And if they write stories with as much power as they can, they can move readers.